Hello everybody, I'm Sarah and I'm a recorder player. There's so much to learn when you're starting learning music. It can be really confusing, so I thought I'd make this video to clear a few things up. I asked my followers, what do you wish you'd known when you started the recorder? So these are the things I think are really helpful to know before you start learning the recorder. First up, the recorder is actually a family of instruments. They come in all different sizes. Each size has its own name. From the tiny gark line up to the sub 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 contrabass, you will probably start off with one of these three, the soprano, the alto or the tenor. The soprano is your general recorder that you think of in school classroom settings and the tenor is an octave lower. If you're going for a deeper sound and you think your hands can handle the stretch, it's a bit of a stretch, then the tenor could be a really nice one to start off with. You use the same books as the soprano because they're written down in the same way. Here we meet our first confusing point. The alto is a different size, which means the notes come out differently. Ooh. For the soprano and alto, you actually read the music differently. This means I wouldn't recommend combining them in the beginning because you're trying to learn reading two systems of music. That can be confusing. So just pick one. Which one you pick is up to you. The alto has a bit more of a a bit of a deeper sound than the soprano. This means that if you're buying a method book to help you learn with, it's important to get the right one because the music is written down differently for these different types of recorder. So if you're playing soprano, double check the books for soprano and the same for alto. Ready for another confusing thing? A lot of musical words are different between British and American English. And that's even before we start talking about other languages. For example, some places in the world call this a soprano recorder. That's what I call it. But in England, it's referred to as a descant. And the alto recorder is also referred to as a treble. So if you're hearing these words, Soprano is descant, alto is treble, uh, and this applies to a lot of different terms in music. So if you're happily on your learning path and then suddenly this random word pops up, it could be that geographically terms are referred to in a different way. How do you know what notes to play? Well, if you're following a method book, it should explain it better step by step, or you can use a fingering chart. These often come with your recorder. It's like a chart showing you which holes to close for each note. You can also find them at recorder-fingerings.com. Here's another confusing curveball. Many notes on the recorder can be played in different ways. As a result, some fingering charts may vary slightly. A common one is B flat, which is sometimes given with this finger, sometimes given with these fingers. So if you meet someone who says, I play B flat like this and you play it like that, that's okay, neither of you are wrong, they both exist. How do you know if your recorder's a soprano or an alto or a tenor, how do you know what you're playing? So I'm gonna measure them for you. Recorders are pretty much standard sizes. Uh... The soprano or descant is roughly 30 centimeters. The tenor is twice as low and twice as long, measuring in at 60 centimeters. And the alto is halfway in between, roughly 45 centimeters. That's magic. By the way, music is basically maths and geometry and proportions. It's like, oh. So you can just measure your recorder. It's a good chance it's a soprano. Um, if you cover the thumb hole and the first finger, the soprano, it should be a B. And for the alto, thumb and first finger, should be an E. That's if you play another instrument and you want to compare it. And then on the types of recorder, there's one more factor, and that's the difference between German and Baroque systems. Basically, your recorder will be built in a Baroque or a German system. The fifth hole on the German system recorder is much smaller. 
This has consequences for the fingerings you use, where you put your fingers, and I'd always recommend starting with a Baroque recorder. Question I get a lot, can you start using a very old recorder? Many of you may have found an ancient wooden instrument in your grandparents' attic and you want to get going. To begin with, this can be fine. I would check that it's not moldy or dirty. A dusty recorder can be cleaned out, but if there is mold or fungus in there, I would avoid it because it can give you a nasty lung infection if you breathe that in. These wooden recorders made in the mid 20th century tend to be not the best quality. They can be fine, but to be honest, the plastic instruments on the market today are much better. <laughs> is the Bressan model by Zenon, which I really love. I also like the instruments by Yamaha, by Aulos. I've done videos on plastic instruments. If you've got this old recorder and it's not moldy, <laughs> try it out. If it's very muffled and the notes are squeaking, it might get frustrating because you're fighting against the instrument all the time. But if the notes sound like they're speaking clearly, then fantastic, that can work great. So now we're gonna get into what you're actually learning and how you're doing that. A question I get a lot is, should you follow a method or just random pieces of music? I would say if you're starting from scratch, especially if you're learning on your own, a method can be really helpful because it gives you step by step in a progressive way what to do. This is an example of a method, Enjoy the Recorder by Brian Bonsor. Let's check, oh yeah, treble or alto. So as you can see, it will show you how to play each note, how that looks, then lots of short pieces to practice it with, building it up step by step. There are so many method books, again, I've done videos. Some, like Enjoy the Recorder, also give a grounding in music theory. So that tells you how to read the music, what all those notes mean. Um, and that can be really helpful if you're coming to it new. Um, you don't have to learn everything at once. These method books introduce the notes on the recorder one by one, giving you lots of practice material to really assimilate and internalize that information before moving on. And it does that for a reason. If you start out by learning all of the notes, it's gonna stay really confusing because you'll never know what they all are. So go slow and steady wins the race. I know it's not the most flashy, but it's the most effective. I realize I'm talking about books and methods, but you don't have to learn to read sheet music. There are so many other ways of being a musician. Um, for example, learning by ear, that's listening to some music and learning it with your ears instead of reading it. Um, you can improvise, that means making it up, basically. Um, you can also learn to read the letters written down, A, B, C. All of these different ways of learning music are equally valid. Please don't let anyone tell you that you are a lesser musician because you don't read sheet music. There are so many fantastic professional musicians and music cultures that use a different form of notation or no notation at all, and that is absolutely fine. One question I had is, should you learn to read sheet music or the letters, uh, like tab notation? I would say in this case, because both are translating symbols on a page into movements, whether that's the notes or the letters, I would go and learn to read the notes because it just gives you so much more information and later you've got so much more freedom of choice of what to read from. Don't be afraid of combining all these different ways of learning. For example, you can have a piece of sheet music in front of you, you can write in some of the notes, F, G, A, don't be afraid of doing that. You can listen to it so that you know how it sounds, um, you can have someone sing it to you or clap it to you. Um, don't be afraid of combining all these different ways. Sometimes I hear people saying, oh, I can only learn it if I know how it goes. That's brilliant. You're using a different part of your brain. That's actually gonna strengthen you as a musician rather than forcing yourself to only learn the music in one way. Practice routine. So if you are gonna learn a musical instrument, you need to practice. You're not just going to absorb the musical knowledge of the universe by osmosis. For me, what works is having a healthy, sustainable practice habit. 
By healthy and sustainable, I mean you can keep doing this over a long period of time and still feel good. So forcing yourself to practice 10 hours one day and then being injured is not sustainable. Everyone will have a different opinion on how long you should practice for and it completely depends on what feels good for you and what fits into your lifestyle. For a beginner, you could aim for 20 minutes a day, see how that feels. I know a lot of you like to do more, a lot of you can do less. The whole subject of practice technique gets a bit deep for this video, but I'll say you do need to do it, keep it regular, often fun and enjoyable. How to practice a piece and actually get better. Um, I've done a lot of videos on practice, but in short, just playing it from beginning to end, once or twice, won't deliver much because you're not actively working on anything. I would say it's all about breaking it up, breaking the music into smaller chunks, and really knowing what you're practicing. Breaking it down, practicing these bits separately before putting it back together will give you a much more thorough practice, much more effective progress. And then sometimes let it go, have fun and rest. This is a good point one of you came up with. You don't just play a piece and finish it and put it away and move on. You can always come back to a piece of music. For me, it's really counterproductive to try and perfect a piece before I move on because I'll always find something else to work on. That perfection will never come. So striving for this final forever version, I don't find that helpful. I'll play something, come back a while later, I'll have discovered new things, learned new things, and yeah. <laughs> Does this movement make any sense to you? <laughs> Which brings me to an important question someone had. How do you know if music is the right level for you? I would say the first thing you've got to do is try it out. I like to practice music that feels like a fun and healthy challenge. So it's not so horrifically difficult that I'll just get depressed. If you start a piece of music and after a while you really think, nah, I'm not getting anywhere, just put it down, come back later, that's fine. It does not mean you failed. I also don't think a piece of music can be too easy because there's always more to discover and work on. A piece that you feel is too easy is actually wonderful material to work in detail on one thing. This could be your fingers or your breathing or your tuning or how you're standing or playing it from memory, any of these things. But take it as an opportunity to really dive into these details rather than thinking, boring. I actually find simple music the hardest to perform. When I ask you what's one thing you wish you know when you started, a lot of you said the tongue. With the recorder, every note starts with the tongue, as if you're singing do 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 instead of this makes it sound so much more defined we refer to this as articulation so if you hear that word that means playing with the tongue try and do it right from the start and it will become automatic more points which I think are very important. The first is rest is important too. For yourself, if you practice a lot, you might need to have a rest just to let your arms and your brain recover. And also for your music, sometimes you need to put a piece of music down for a while, come back in a couple of weeks or longer. It takes time for these things to sink in. And lastly, a lot of you wrote in to say, I wish I had known that the recorder was so cool. By me saying it's cool instantly makes it uncool. The recorder is such an amazing instrument. It can do so much and be proud of that. I'm not gonna downplay being a recorder player. My t-shirt says recorder on it. I've said a lot, but there's so much that I haven't said, so I'd love your input too. Please put in the comments what you wished you'd known when you started or what you would like to know if you're just getting started out. And yeah, we can share this information together. As always, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face down here. Over here is the Team Recorder web shop where you can buy, amongst other things, this Team Recorder t-shirt in a range of colours and sizes. And here's some more videos. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye!